Hope you're doing good. Mike are back with another video. Back here to talk about One UI 7 and some of the new settings that we have incorporated in some of the Samsung apps as well as our general settings page. And so this video is going to be a little bit more nuanced from that perspective because it, it highlights some of the customizable changes or features that have been included that sometimes is easy to overlook. And so with that being said, let's the first thing we're going to actually jump into is the settings. And before we do, if you guys haven't already, make sure to ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, don't notification bell, so all free. That way you know it's my video. So you and I can sit back check, see what's cracking. We are so close to 10,000 subscribers. And again, I appreciate you guys. I appreciate you guys respecting the hard work and, and, and being along for the journey. And so hitting that 10,000 mark is going to be a, a special day for sure. So without further ado, let's now get into the video. Let's jump into settings. And the first thing I want to highlight in settings, if I back out of there, we'll come to that, you know, shortly, is lock screen and AOD. So if we come in here, one of the things you're going to see now in here is the now bar. Now this, I don't think is 100% official yet on One UI 7 Beta 2. They're still tweaking some things just because I know this with the S24 series and S25. Now bar has some more Google-like features or some level of live activity-like features that may come to it. So as of right now, the now bar just allows for some of these features such as your current mode. I turn that off because I don't need that down at the bottom of the screen for me. Media player, which is what I like. The one issue I have is not being able to cycle through multiple media apps. I would love to be able to cycle through, let's say, YouTube and Apple Music or for others might be like Spotify and Apple Music and, and YouTube or something of those sorts. So hopefully we'll be able to have multiple items that's actually cycle through with now bar. But here's some things that you can actually, that can access now bar right here. And I like that. I actually like this for sure. And you see search from Google. If I actually click on it, you see sports from Google right here. This is the way you can kind of get the live activity, like activities here. And so if things are going on here, this should pop up in the live activities. We'll see if it will for sure. If I hit finish. I don't think it's a big deal here, but if you read it, follow the teams and leagues they're interested in and get live notifications during play. To see sports from Google in the now bar, you need to go to sports from Google settings and follow the teams or leagues. You do not need to turn on personalization or personalized search and what uh, web and app activity. <laughs> a little hazy here behind the camera. So. Here are some features that are coming to or that will be officialized with the now bar. That's pretty good to see there, and I'm hoping that will be the case here soon. I haven't seen live activities from that perspective yet, but hopefully they will pop up there. Maybe you have to check the game out first on Google, and then it will pop up in now bar. But again, I don't quite know yet, given the fact that I haven't seen it pop up yet. So we'll see what happens with the official launch. And as a side note, when it comes to the now bar being on the lock screen and or up in the top left corner of your notification panel, I took a screenshot of this earlier, but we know that media can be up there in the top corner as well, right? You know, so if you're playing music, you can tap on it, it'll pop down a window pane. And let's just act like we're going to have something... Uh, start here and i go up as you see right here there it is a map up there in the corner so it's very nice to see that we're able to have more activity be official and okay focus and <laughs> have more activity be official and be at a finger's tips reach when it comes to activity you don't have to worry about them disappearing or, or always having to constantly pull out a notification shape just to get answers you have it right there in your top left corner in a pill shape. So I do like that a lot. Let me go ahead. And once you click on it, this is what you get here. And of course, what I could do is just hit in navigation and it's done. So I like that a lot when it comes to the now bar in general, but then also the way notifications have been working with One UI 7. And I would say as a last side note for notifications, I like the fact that notifications, at least the way they've been presented for me so far, and I have them off for some apps it feels like One UI 7 has also helped with distractions. So I don't really, I'm not really on my phone as often because when you consider 
your lock screen notification aren't right there in your face anymore. You have to constantly look up here for them. And so one of the things that that's something to get used to for sure, but also the fact of the matter is it just feels like they're prioritizing being productive, which means you may not need to be on your phone all the time, always checking for notifications because of how notifications now work with One UI 7. So that's something I also appreciate about One UI 7 and the notifications. Now, what's the next thing we'd like to talk about? Well, if we jump into settings again, and if we actually scroll down just a little bit to security and privacy, we know uh, Samsung has done a lot of work when it comes to Samsung Knox and everything. And so Auto Blocker is still here. Auto Blocker still has plenty to do, plenty to work with there. And you know, of course, you could do maximize restrictions which would really turn up the, the, the security on your device. Just know that you're going to be limited when it comes to a lot of activities. So keep that in mind there. And then you have internet privacy protection right here. You can click on this. You're, you protect it from uh, interruptions. You can block a lot of things here within security and privacy. Being able to access these features here. You're able to see your time. You're able to see you know, what, where your privacy dashboard is, if you will. And so again, check out this page, especially when it comes to your security. So that way you know that you're on top of it when it comes to your own personal security of your device. And so you have your personal data intelligence that and, and your Samsung privacy website. So they have definitely added a few things, Android system intelligence. You know, this is where you can find your health connect if you use the uh, health apps on your device. So that's some uh, of the changes there when it comes to your security settings. There's another thing I'd like to show you guys here in, in advanced features. And you have labs. You also have Bixby. Bixby's had a little bit of change. Bixby is supposed to be a little bit more contextual or Galaxy AI, if you will, being able to do things with multiple apps with commands. Not quite here yet with uh, One UI 7 Beta 2. But I can definitely say that Bixby has a nice new kind of look and feel. I renamed my Bixby Jarvis. So if I say, hey, Jarvis, Jarvis, boom. You see what Bixby looks like there down at the bottom. It looks very crisp and clean. And so I like that. And it's got nice little chirp sounds when it comes to using Bixby. Bixby is definitely really good for like on-device settings and on-device you know, maneuverability, a lot of things off device where you start hitting that, trying to do things, you know, with searching and all that. Bixby has always been a little bit behind there. So we'll see the progression of Bixby slash Galaxy AI probably going forward and or renamed outright to Galaxy AI. We will definitely see about that. And so those are the settings there. And of course, you have Galaxy AI, which features a lot of interesting intelligence programs that we now have with One UI, really six and One UI seven. And Call Assist is another good one because Call Assist offers a variety of tools. And so if we come into settings and we come in, or phone, and you go into settings, and then you go into settings within the phone settings, you have your live translate and call scripts, transcripts, as a result of also being able to record phone calls. And so by clicking on that, you can have it on and you can actually show the notification while recording and you can check your recorded phone calls and then you, of course you could delete old recordings and the little button will pop up right next to your basically your your dial pad you know during a phone call if you actually want to start recording a call and so that's a pretty nice neat feature to have baked into the phone app because there's a lot of individuals who may like to re record phone calls from time to time, if not for protective purposes, maybe for receipts or what have you. So it, it's good that, or maybe just a general note taking and, you, and you're using it via phone call. You need to record the lecture via your phone. So there's a lot of use cases when it comes to recording phone calls from that perspective. The next app I'd like to show you guys when it comes to settings, of course, if you jump into calendar, calendar and reminders are now together. So if you click the plus option down there, you have your event or reminders. You go, come over here. Of course, you have all these settings. If you click on settings, then you'll see what you could do here. They really didn't tweak too many things within the calendar. They did add new alert backgrounds, but nothing like major from that perspective. 
Of course, anything in the trash you get rid of. Labs, they have labs everywhere, but it's nothing crazy. Scale writing to calendar size, which is neat, and that's always been there. So nothing major in the calendar app. We jump in here to the Samsung Internet Explorer. You'll see the little dots down there because they've added some changes. So if we click on settings over here, we will see that they may have added some new additional changes in here. Changes that they're also not really making obvious. If you click on labs, use website dark theme that's already been there and the system font that's always been there. Click on useful features. Again, most of this has always been there. If anything, uh, they've, uh, what's the name? They've improved the summarize feature when it comes to the Samsung in the Explorer. Meaning, if you want to summarize a page and just get the cliff notes from any articles, that has now been improved with One UI 7. So that's good to see there. So let's say, where am I at? Let's say I click on this Forbes article and then I click on that Galaxy AI button. Oh, you can't summarize Forbes. That's right, some websites won't let you do it. Let's see if The Verge will. So we click on that and then you click on Summarize. It's gonna summarize Verge's article to give you the cliff notes as to what they're talking about. So the AirPods Max USB-C update and then you'll get some cliff notes there and then of course you can uh, copy and paste and all that. And you can also click this little button right here and you can change your summary style from standard to detailed. So if you want a little bit more information, you can do that. You can translate what you've summarized as well. So this feature is really, really good especially if you don't want to read a full article or or you need to translate it you need to just copy certain things for note taking again it, it it's all at the discretion of you and really the website or the blog the company if they're allowing summarization of their article with galaxy ai so that's good to see there samsung health has some has a new feature it's really down at the bottom called mindfulness it's still in beta as of right now but this is, works similar to the journal app that apple has where you can actually check your mood in so you want to meditate you want to do a mood check-in you want to do breathing exercises you could do that if we did a mood check-in i click on that and then they did some updates while we were here and then here's some options you initially start with how are you feeling let's say i'm i'm fine then i hit next down at the bottom then it's going to ask me about all the emotions that i'm feeling as a result of being fine and if those are not enough you hit the drop down arrow you have plenty more to choose from right here and so you know i could click enthusiastic right and since uh, these members has a new something going on there uh, you know, I could say I'm also annoyed if I wanted to. So if I click on annoyed, now I hit next, and then it's going to ask me where you know where am I? I'm currently at home. I'm currently by myself, and you can add more in the field right there to be a little bit more detailed. So you can really treat Samsung Health as its own kind of journal app if you wanted to for your moods, and then it logs in right there. If you want, you click thumbs up for the feedback, back out, and then it'll log it in for you so that's how that works there with samsung health and samsung notes has some more has a little has, has some fun to it if we click on settings and you see all the little bubbles pop away which means i may have accidentally accessed new settings but if you come in here you know you of course you have all your syncing then you have your your note style you have your password and biometrics you can import notes Auto save, and this is where you could get the uh, what what note assist is your drawing assist. You know you can uh, transcribe within notes now as well, and 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 actually record like voice record within Samsung Notes as well, and transcribe at the same time. So Samsung Notes has definitely gotten beefed up between One UI six and One UI seven. So really good some good things to see here. Oftentimes we just simply forget to check the settings to see what's available now with our apps that we use on a regular basis when it comes to our Samsung apps. And those are the main apps that Samsung will be updating with these large updates. So that's why I do videos like this to bring that kind of information to you. So that way you guys are ready for that. With that being said, I'm going to do a video following up, talking about One UI 7 Beta 2, how has the phone been affected overall? And is it recommendable to download this software for your Galaxy Z Fold 6? That'll be the next video. But again, as always, if you guys haven't already, let me know down in the comment section below what you guys think of One UI 7, what you guys think of what they could potentially do for One UI 8. 
if they don't if they didn't do it for one UI seven, the comment section is open for the discussion. But again, as always, if you guys haven't already, make sure you ignite the like button, subscribe to the channel, notification bell, it's all free. That way you never miss our videos. So you and I can sit back check, see what's cracking. And don't forget to hit that super thing button down there by the like and dislike button, cash app and PayPal, and check the channel out for all the videos available to you. That's where to keep tech fresh and alive on this channel. Man, Michael signing out until the next video. Wait for it.